today because uh, I have the opportunity, the rare opportunity to sit down with someone who is, I was mind blown by him because he's super talented. And in addition to that, he's one of the kindest young men that I've met in a while. So I want to introduce oh, you to Sergio Gutierrez. Um, well, let me say just a little bit of an introduction of, you know, of who you are. He is a local artist here in San Diego. He does amazing paint in record time. Uh, he's gonna share with us a little bit about that. But in addition to that, he's also an amazing musician. So he is just one um, outlier that tells you that whenever you're passionate about something, you really don't have to just do one thing. You can excel at a couple of things. Isn't yeah. that true? Yeah, a few things. You really put your mind into it now. Yeah, and you know, what attracted me to ask him to sit down with us today is precisely um, because I saw how how much passion you put in when you're painting and you know the how much how happy it makes you. But in addition to that, you're just great. I mean, it's not like you're just painting. I don't know, uh, you know, a, a tree or something. You make these amazing paintings. So I'm, I'm really not good at painting trees anyways. Well, you are definitely <laughs> great at painting other things, right? So Sergio, let's let's start a little bit with you. So who is Sergio Gutierrez? Who is Sergio Gutierrez? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, when I think of, of you know myself, my life, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm just a uh, I'm fortunate to have come from a great family and a, and a great surrounding, growing up in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. When I was a teenager, I knew there was something more, mm -hmm. and and where I grew up is a very small town. Not a lot of people have dreams and aspirations. Mm -hmm. Some do, but they're just too afraid to follow them of because course. you can't do much in a very small town. That's true. But, you can only get so far. Right, right. So so I, I'm just I'm just a, a guy who wants to explore my own potential. Mm -hmm. And in doing that and as I as I explore that and, and I keep rising, I, I want to really pull people up and show them you know, even people in small towns, like, look, mm -hmm. I came from a small town, there's really no excuse that you could explore your potential. Because that's the bottom line. I, I believe there's just so much stress and hate and all this negativity in the world. And it, it really comes from people just being angry with where they're at in life. And, you know, it's everybody has a gift. Mm -hmm. uh, but too many people have, uh, you know, they just learn as a child hearing it from, you know, you, their parents, people they love, or friends say, oh, you can't do that. Oh, you know, we're from this small town, we're right. you know, from this sort of family, and you're, you know, you don't have enough this or enough that. Yeah. I just, I really am a person, like I said, I'm exploring my potential, and I, I want to be a person to help others. That's awesome. And how was, or when did you feel that the first, I guess, pull inside to push you? outside of what you knew came in. How old were you or how did it, how did you come about that? I I knew right when I picked up the guitar. Actually. Okay. Yeah, oh, I picked up the guitar at fifteen. Okay. And of course all my favorite bands, you know, they all played in LA and uh, of course branched out played around the world and, and that that really was exciting to me. Mm -hmm. Even though I wasn't living it, that was just exciting to know that that was possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, and I knew I had to, to move into a different location and to uh, put myself in that in that pool. So at 15, is the first time that you feel that this is where you want to go? Right. And, well, naturally at 15, there was only so much you could do. So how? Did, what was your first step towards this? Did you just start playing at that point? Or yeah, what did you do? It was all, you know, I, I had um, found a gift. I once, the very first time I picked up a guitar, first of all, felt very natural. Mm -hmm. So that, even at a young age, I knew in my head, I'm like, okay, this is something. Mm -hmm. This is something I, I gotta utilize. This is a God given gift that I just need to nurture um, and get better at. And you mentioned I need to move out of my small town because mm -hmm. I wanna, you know, show the world on a bigger scale. Oh, okay, great, yeah. awesome. So after that first nudge in your heart when you got your guitar and you started being inspired by other musicians and by 
the possibilities. Then at 15, how did you kind of start setting yourself up to kind of realize that dream? You know, it's all, I mean, at the time I wasn't really conscious of it, but I knew there was, there was definite steps I had to be taken, right? Mm -hmm. So the first step was just getting better at my craft so that when I do move to that space, my, you know, my goal is always LA. Okay. When I can move into that space, like I'm, I first of all feel confident enough right. to say, hey, I'm a talk player. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think I'm a mm -hmm. musician, right? Um, Did you take classes or was it all self-taught? It was self-taught for the first um, couple of years. Mm -hmm. And then I actually was fortunate enough to be chosen to uh, attend a charter school oh. called the Public Academy for Performing Arts. And it was such a wonderful experience. Yeah, for anybody out there considering putting their children in a charter school, it's, it, was, it was amazing, you know. Um, there was like 12 kids per class, so you just get really, you know, you get to be buddies with the teachers, right? And especially, uh, I, I learned classical guitar and, and, and voice. So you kind of focus on what matters to you most right. in order to uh, complete your education, right? Right, that's, right. That's how it normally is focused. Right, it was awesome. And, and um, I felt most focused in a guitar class because oh. I, I wanted, I, I had been playing a lot of really intricate uh, music, mm -hmm. um, guitar-wise, but I didn't know why certain notes went with certain chords and the correlation between just a lot of things, right? Mm -hmm. Music is like that. Right. So so once I took uh, classes at this performing arts school, it, then it all made sense, then it clicks. Now I have the theory of it, the mathematics of it, mm -hmm. and I have the mechanics going, mm -hmm. so I was ready. I wanted to go to L.A. Or so I thought I was ready. I mean, <laughs> LA was a, it, it was a culture shock, absolutely. And so when is that you are ready and you just pick up your bags and move to LA? I was 20 years old. Uh, I was working construction for a little bit just to raise a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, before you head out somewhere, you spend a lot on getting things yeah. ready. And so I, I quite literally drove to LA with my guitars in the back of my Camaro, mm -hmm. some clothes, and $500 in my pocket. Wow. And, and that whole story is, is uh, pretty crazy. So, did you have a friend to crash with, or did you have any plans where you were just like, everything has worked yourself out, and I'm just gonna go because that's what I need to do? Uh, my drummer at the time, had an uncle, and his uncle had a place right on Sunset Strip, and that was like my dream. I mean, wow. to small town New Mexico boy to, to move to Hollywood yeah. right off the bat. I mean, talk about a culture shock, right? Yeah, really. So we got there, this was March of 07. Mm -hmm. I was 20 years old. And quite literally the next day, I remember we got there, I think it was a Friday. Mm -hmm. Saturday, we wake up and the drummer and I are so happy. You know, the uncle's there, the drummer and I are like, man, it's so cool. We get to stay with your uncle, we get our music. Career started. Mm -hmm. Uncle wakes up, pissed off, throwing things around the house. Says, "You know what? Screw this. Business sucks. I'm moving to Florida." Gets a new haul that day, packs his stuff, leaves. Mm -hmm. So here we are. We have but a week to basically figure out our whole lives in California. I have five hundred dollars in my pocket. <laughs> the drummer has zero in his pocket. Oh boy! So, so you drove together, or you met there? So we met there. Yeah, okay. he, he showed up right at lunch with you before. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. It, it was it was intense. So then what happened? So he had uh, he had a family member in Oceanside. That's how I ended up in San Diego. Oh, okay. Family member that he hadn't spoken to in years. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is this is where the story gets good mm -hmm. and where my whole life began. So okay. he had a family member, she put us up for a couple days. She was like, Okay, you guys uh, you guys need help. <laughs> you know. So she was kind enough to put us up for a couple days, but on the third day, she basically said, look, I'd love to help you guys, but, you know, we have lives and you guys got to find jobs, and, you know, or just go back to New Mexico, which was not an option for me. Right. The right. drummer was like, let's go back and save money and come back to California. I'm like, no, we're in really California, weird. man. Like, I don't <laughs> want to work backwards. That's just... Yeah. So, so I said, okay, so we... We found a really nice apartment, the Boulevard Apartment Center in Oceanside, and you needed three things. Mm -hmm. 
in order to be accepted. Mm -hmm. You needed an ID, mm -hmm. which I had. Okay. Had a fake ID, by the way. ID, thousand dollar deposit, uh -oh. and proof of employment. Oh, brothers. And they needed it by the next day. Okay. <laughs> I like your reaction. This is good. So okay. I had one of the three, but I was determined to get the job within the day and a thousand dollars. Wow. So I phoned my parents and said, hey, can you wire me a thousand bucks? Right? Like, this is do or die. Yeah. My parents are so supportive. Man, no question to ask. Wow. So now I have two out of three. How the heck am I going to prove that I'm employed by tomorrow morning? Right. So, so we were driving around town and I was just thinking, thinking, thinking. And it hit me. I saw the staples, right, at like the office store. Mm -hmm. And I was like, stop the car. I'm like, why? Like, let's go to Staples real quick. I get down and I purchase, like, buck 50, like, a empty pay stub book. Okay. And I start writing out pay stubs to myself and with a fake signature. And I probably wrote, I probably had like 30 of these. Right with dates, fake dates and signatures and, and uh, numbers. Wow. And uh, kind of crumpled up a couple, put a coffee stain on one, mm -hmm. and uh, stayed going together uneven. Mm -hmm. And uh, went back the next day, 2000 bucks, here's my ID, and here's proof of employment. And uh, she took it, looked it over, and said, Okay, here are your keys. And I was like, Whoa! Wow, talk about. <laughs> Wow. And, and that, that's that's where life began. That's where you know we found jobs and then started uh, playing shows at the old things with Go Go and other venues that were just a dream. Okay, so I have no idea how you pull it up, but it's awesome. So you got your apartment. So what happens next? So, oh man, what? Wow. <laughs> well, I mean, of course, I don't expect every single little right, dirty right. detail, but like, in, you know, because just like we were saying a moment ago, you came from New Mexico, you literally make happen, come over here, you go to Sunset, doesn't work, right. you come to Oceanside, it works for two days, but then you have like one day time frame to make it work, Right. you go make it work, and then what happens? So, so that's where our life began, I mean, uh... You know, just naturally, we found jobs, mm -hmm. right? And uh, those jobs basically paid for. I remember as a, the band lived together mm -hmm. now, because the other guitar player flew in. Oh, okay. And cool. So there's three of us living in the, in the apartment now. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, all the money we had basically went to the $5, uh, uh, what is it, the pizzas. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what are they? The, the not Domino's. Little, 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 little Caesars. Yeah, yeah Little Caesars. <laughs> Yeah, so that, that was our diet, Little Caesars and Jack Daniels, and uh, wow. and the rest of our money just basically went to um, playing gigs at the Whiskey Go Go and, and gigs locally around town. Now, let me ask you a question, because I know that in order to get there, well, at least now, not just anybody can walk in, you guys were relatively new. So what kind of charm did you guys, you know, pull in there to be able to start playing? Because I mean, I know musicians that have been trying for years to get in there. So what do you think, you know, was what allowed you guys to really get started so quickly there? Well, I, I think I think a lot of it, our music was uh, very 80s sounding. Oh. Okay. But it wasn't, we we, we called our, our tagline was the metal you remember. Oh. So it wasn't metal like we did now, like screaming and fast and crazy. It was more of like your... Uh, like Dawkins and your your you know Bon Jovi's and Guns N' Roses, oh, okay. so we had that, and so we and we were all leather. It was like it was like we were stuck back in time. Oh, right? okay. So and we were like 20, 21 years old. So people look at us and like, of yeah. course we gotta have them like play. Like this is crazy, oh, that's you cool. know, you know. So that that's how we got it. But the whiskey and go go nowadays, it, it's pay to play. So. Um, Almost anybody can play there if they got the money to play. Right, right, so. right. Well, that's that's awesome. So then you start playing at these shows, and then what happens? Because I know that you know music is just part of your story, but then you get into this amazing world of painting. So how did that all 
you know, happen. So that was a fun transition. So uh, I was working at AT and T at the time, making minimum wage, and at, I was literally behind the desk mm -hmm. on Monster.com, putting in my <laughs> application <laughs> other places, you know. <laughs> and I get a phone call, and this this is part of the story on how I got started painting. Uh -huh. So I got a phone call, and a woman on the other line said, "Hi, is this Sergio?" Well, really, yes, it is. She says, uh, I work for the Gemological uh, Institute of America. Are you interested in diamonds? I'm like, hell yeah, I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I went in for an interview, and then in the interview, they had you uh, look at diamonds with a microscope and do this stuff. If you're natural, and you get hired, and I got hired. So, but fast forward three and a half years later, mm -hmm. um, a lot of people actually get injured doing that job because it's very, very, stationary and stiff, oh, okay. right, looking through a microscope, okay. and, and you got to think, by day, I was dealing with these small diamonds, well, some are you know, bigger diamonds, but, um, you basically have tweezers, and then you have like a little, it looks like a panel, a little spun at you, mm -hmm. so by day, I was doing a lot of my new movements, oh. and by night, I was still playing music, so it was a lot of this, oh. so until this day, um, my tendons are, are screwed up from, from that from job, that so I knew I was leaving that job, so... Um, like we mentioned earlier off camera, mm -hmm. I just basically said, look, what can I do that's creative, mm -hmm. that's fun, that I can make a few bucks at down the line? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I just started sketching. I had a, a photo of my father next to my computer and uh, basically hugging a horse. Right? And I sketched it, and it was pretty damn good. And uh, I, I no glasses, no nothing. No, just no. You. And uh, I went out and bought some cheap canvas, cheap paints, and brushes, and just started. And and the rest is history. This was back in 2011. So you've never actually taken any painting classes? No, wow. no painting classes. That is very impressive. So now that you start dabbling with pain and obviously you're so good then how did you go from just you know doing this drawing of your dad to this amazing explosion of art like how did it go from just starting to just become this because i am pretty sure that none of this stuff is easy to paint so yeah it is well all right then i'll take your word for it when you do it enough, it is. Right, no, right. I'm, but, I'm you know, it, it exploded so, you know, so beautifully. So how did you go from, from nothing to this? Well, it's it's really simple. It's it's almost like, well, well, how did you go from uh, being a baby, just laying down to, to crawling to walking? I mean, you know, a baby doesn't think about failing when he tries to walk and falls down. Sure. You know, that's just, I believe, that's just the way we should continue thinking as adults. So with that, in the beginning, I literally was I was painting shapes mm -hmm. just to feel the relationship between the brushes, the, the paint, the canvas, you know, maybe splash of water, so that, that relationship happens and what does what. And so shapes and then and then it just goes from there. And actually you can see I, I know this camera can capture this, but I did a lot of these designs mm -hmm. in the very beginning. So just full canvases, full of these designs, which I call my crazies. Oh, I you see. Know? And uh, so this piece is actually cool, kind of side note, but this piece is cool because it incorporates two of my passions. These designs, along with doing portraiture, mm -hmm. you know, and tasteful names like you see here. Mm -hmm. I really, that's why this is the only one in the gallery frame. Mm -hmm. So, so anyway, but it's just, it's building blocks and, and you know, thank God we live in this uh, information age where I tell people, if you wanted to learn how to fly a helicopter, you can literally go online and put yourself through your own college, if you will, if you're disciplined enough, right? That, that was a key word. Disciplined enough to read the pages, to watch some YouTube videos, right? There's YouTube videos on anything. That's true. You know, and that's exactly what I did. I, I bought books on how to, you know, sketch and, and YouTube videos on different acrylic painting techniques and literally just... Every day, every uh, day, every for day. For how, how many hours would you say that you started dedicating that? Oh, it was kind of all over the place. Um, but, I mean, 
half a day every day pretty much because I still was playing uh, music full time. So, but it excited me because I knew, I mean, you got to think in, in my position, I'm, I'm 24 years old. Mm -hmm. I have so much fun on stage playing music. Right. Right, after every song people are clapping and cheering for you, like mm -hmm. the, the people don't really get that. Mm -hmm. You know, you can be in an office somewhere and type the the best article or blog ever and you won't get any claps. Right. Because you're like, yeah, of course it's a freaking job. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? That's true. So so you know, how excited am I at twenty four years old? I'm playing guitar in a cool band, having a great time, and, and by day I get to sit down with a glass of wine and just create whatever the hell I want. There's so, nobody to tell me, hey, you gotta do this many paintings, or you gotta, you gotta do this subject, you gotta, no. So at that point you were living full from your music. Right. That is awesome. 24, that's very impressive, guys. That yeah. really is. So then, um, you are doing all of this, and how did you end up here in San Diego? Oh my gosh, so like I said, I lived in Oceanside, I actually mm -hmm. got a, the home where I started painting was, was right by the beach, which was awesome, oh, that's, wow. like, that's a whole other section of, of life that I'm just so grateful for, I mean, I lived by the beach, I'm four years old, and I'm using that, wow. like, you know, yeah. and, and this was a, a testament to, uh, let's just say, people back home saying I couldn't do it. Right. And I never, I never go and say I told you so, but with my words, but I do with, your with, actions, with, you with, do. with my actions and with what I continue to do, which is, which is rise, right, right. And, and do the best I can. I think that one important thing to highlight, if, if you don't mind, right. is you've really, you know, from, from the moment we started the conversation until now, one of the main characteristics uh, about you is that you are very consistent and persistent. Um, you know, a lot of people, especially, you know, the younger, the younger these days, um, because of the movies, how they say, you know, when someone builds a, an empire, they, in the movies they show in five years later, but they don't show the grind. Oh. And sometimes we tend to think that if you're not successful in two months, then you're a failure. So you are a testament and a testament that hard work consistent over the years and a lot of self-discipline is what has gotten you so much. a life that you enjoy so much, right? And people will never realize, most people will mm -hmm. never realize, uh, I mean, you know, because let's be honest, on social media, it's, it's a highlight reel. Now, I'll be honest, I, I post all the great things I'm doing, right? right? But I don't necessarily post things, um, you know, for example, a lady bought a painting for thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's this one that you see here, the rich one, which mm -hmm. is above. You can't really get that. Mm -hmm. She brought it back, right? And, and that's a whole other story. But mm -hmm. see, people don't see that. Right. Right. Like, it is, like this is my living. Like you can't toy around with somebody's living like that. You yeah. know? Yeah. And uh, so yeah, there's just a lot that goes on. Um, you know, people say, well, who? Who helps you book your shows and book your travels and who uh, me? Yeah, because yeah. I was gonna say, in addition to all your art, you still have to manage the business side. Right, right. People don't realize. I mean, I'm literally my own accountant. Uh, a lot of times, I'm my, my own damn cheerleader. You know, <laughs> you have to be. You know, yeah. like I'm the artist. I'm the musician. I, I, uh, I'm my own booker, my booking agent. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm. I mean, I do it all. I'm my own manager. I'm my own. You know. They are a person. It's I mean, it's just, it's, it's insane, yeah. you know? So I like to, to uh, people who are aspiring to, to do what I do, mm -hmm. it's like, I, I just would like for, to show them what it's like in the day of. Right. A you day know? in your life so that they because understand everything that is behind the scenes. It's fun and mm -hmm. creating is fun and to, it's, it's awesome to know that I'm going to leave a legacy, like these are going to last longer right. than me, right? But everything comes with. Price. It's just how bad do you want it? That's true. That was like the bottom line. How bad do you want something? Yeah, because chances are, unless you're wearing wedding on the inheritance from somebody, nobody's going to hand it to you. Well, and even then, you get the inheritance, you don't have a sense of pride. True. Because it'll just give you. That's very true. Even yeah. then. That's very true. Guys, don't forget that. One of the things that I've been meaning to ask you since we sat down is what are you wearing? 
because it looks amazing, but isn't it cool? Your skin? It's different. This this is clothes. The clothing of the future. Is there any way that you can show us a little bit? Yeah, you know, yeah. The entire thing, guys. You need to check this out. So this is a jacket made by a friend of mine, mm -hmm. Vincent Guzman Cruz. Wow. He's out of, uh, here in San Diego, and he creates these by hand. I mean. Oh wow! Look at this. It's all the detail and stuff. It's incredible. He also designs uh, footwear and so yeah. That is really uh, nice. Really nice. It's going to be really nice when I uh, get a little air too. But <laughs> yeah, check him out. He's on oh, Instagram. Look at that. Even it has a little bit of leathers in the inside. Mm -hmm. These pockets. Oh, this is nice. Right? Very cool. It's very unique. Very unique. Which I like it. It's, look at that. It has little feathers. Wow. Look at that. So you're. It's for someone who's definitely not shy. So, you know what you shared with us so far is so impressive, and I know that you have not gone into all the details because we'll be here all night. Yeah. But um, obviously, your persistence and you know just doing what you love is definitely paying because it's so mm -hmm. impressive. So, Thank you. what is next for you? So, what is your vision of where your art is going, both musically and painting wise? Oh, that's a that's a broad question. I mean, you know, I have I have uh, shorter term mm -hmm. uh, visions on where what that looks like, and, and longer term. And I think um, the five year plan, if you will, mm -hmm. I just really I, I have this this show to where I incorporate uh, live painting and live mm -hmm. music in one show, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's it's so unique. Not I don't know anybody doing it right now. Yeah. And uh, it's just really cool reaction when I do the show where I, I play some live music. Mm -hmm. I'm standing next to an empty canvas and people mm -hmm. are like, what's going to happen, whatever. Right. Most people I've seen a live, you know, performance, mm -hmm. music performance. Now, I drop the guitar and, and I put on a playlist of whoever I'm about to paint. Let's just say it's, oh. uh, you know, let's just say I throw on some Rolling Stones and I'll paint Mick Jagger. Oh, cool. Because that was going to be my question since... I have not seen a show yet, which I'm definitely now. I, I have to see right. one. I didn't know how were the dynamics. You know, when did you play, and if you painted before, or after? So right. Total sense. Right. So I'll, I'll paint a Mick Jagger to a Rolling Stones playlist to kind of keep the the, the vibe going, and mm -hmm. then when I'm done with the painting, I'll uh, drop the brush, pick up, back up the guitar, maybe play a couple of Rolling Stones tunes, and continue entertaining and. Uh, and it's really cool. The client gets to keep the painting, mm -hmm. you know, or uh, or I do it for charities as well. I love love to give as well. My last John Lennon sold for thirty eight thousand dollars. Wow, that's charity. wonderful. Yeah, and, uh, and gave, what was that charity for? So I gave a hundred percent of it to uh, his name is Baby Jack. Okay. And Baby Jack was born uh, basically unconscious, mm. right? He had a, uh, the umbilical cord around his neck and. and now he's hooked up to all these wires, and he was only he was only four months old, I believe, at, at the time. This was uh, in February 2019, uh -huh. and um, and I heard about it, and I was part of this uh, extreme leadership conference mm -hmm. where I performed the song Imagine, uh -huh. and then I painted John Lennon, and then uh, the option happened, and, and it sold thirty eight thousand, and every penny, uh, I, you know, went to Baby Jack in the hopes that he can live this amazing life and uh and you know try to reach his potential uh, so. you know i think that's that's really cool um the other question that i wanted to ask you is because you have such a great personality i know that you are going to leave a, an artistic legacy but as a person as a human being what is something that moves you or that motivates you to keep on growing or to keep on inspiring others uh, I mean, this is me thinking out loud, but I, I just love to see people treat one another well. I think I think to see that on a daily basis, it, it just really. I mean, I, I think naturally for everybody, you see that you see somebody opening a door, somebody buying somebody a coffee behind them in line. I mean, right. naturally, just like, oh, I gotta do that more, right? right. right. That's just kind of where what, but why why don't we? Right. That's you know, true. so so I I don't know. I, I'm not gonna say that inspires like my art or music, but that just inspires life. True. You know, true. I, I just love when people treat people well, and and, uh, and it's it's just sad when people don't 
contribute. Yeah, and, and I think something that you mentioned um, off camera a little bit earlier, it's so true that when somebody is not nice to you, you don't take it personal because you realize that it has nothing to do with you and it's probably they're having a bad day or they're going through something rough. I mean, it's easier said than done. Right. But when you train yourself to look for the good in people, you, you find it literally. Well, and it just goes back to compassion. I mean, there's yeah. obviously, I, I can't recall where I heard it, but they said there's no happy or unhappy people. There's just joy, joyful people and le a lot less joyful people. Yeah. Right? So it's not that they're bad or good. Right. It's just that this person who, who's good, let's just say, is... You know, they provide a great upbringing, or they're they're working on their life to where things are going well, right? Right. That's and true. and if someone is a jerk to you, you know, I I don't take it personally. I mean, poor thing. Maybe they grew up in a really uh, fortunate situation. Uh, yeah. And, and who am I to say? I grew up with great parents who are still together. Thank God. Um, great family. Nothing tragic has ever happened in my life. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, who am I to say? Oh, that that guy's a bad person. True. That's true. Like, and but you know what? I think you you touched on something very important: compassion. Right. These days, unfortunately, we are so involved with our own thing that we sometimes forget to look, you know, to the other person. So yeah. I agree with you. So I am so grateful for you to spend this time with us. It's been such an honor to see here, to sit here with all your art. We of course are going to show you guys some of his pieces because they're just unbelievable but uh, once again i wanted to thank you and i am um, you know i can only wish you all the success in the world and uh we're gonna be just following you around the world thank you so much and be sure everybody to uh just please continue to support your local artists i mean we yes we really do work hard and and uh and your love and support really just uh keeps us above that wave, keeps us above water. And, and come visit me at a Forgotten Barrel Winery. That This is where we're sitting at my gallery's on-site at Forgotten Barrel Winery here in Escondido, California. And uh, website is sergiosfineart.com and my music website is sergiogutierrezmusic.com. Correct, so please check him out and uh, we'll bring you more news from him as we follow him around, guys. Thank you so much. Thank Have a wonderful Anna. day. I appreciate you. Thank sweetheart. you so much. Thank you.